So Ghost of Yote was announced, which is a follow-up game to Ghost of Tsushima, and the internet is ablaze. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. This is wild. What's even more wild is with all of the talk going on on Twitter, Sucker Punch and the voice actor haven't said anything about it. So let's get into all of this. So if you guys were watching the PlayStation 5 State of Play, they announced Ghost of Yote, which is the follow-up to probably my favorite game of all time. Now, people may take exception to that. A lot of people out there say, well, Jin was an uninspired. He had no personality. That's that's great, dude. Like, that's, that's awesome. I mean, he was a dude who was fighting with, you know, betraying his personal beliefs versus not betraying them. It's just a, it's, it's an interesting story. I liked it. I liked the characters. Now, apparently you have bad taste and you believe in slop if you actually had any sort of connection to this game at all. This is what I've been hearing. So Ghost of Yote gets announced and I was like, holy crap. So I jumped off of the state of play, went right over to Twitter and immediately, and you can go back, you can type in Ghost of Wokeshima and you can see before they had even finished the state of play, people were already saying that this game was woke and it was going to be pushing all kinds of political messaging simply because we were no longer following Jin Sakai. We were following a new character who happened to be female. Now, I will say this. That is absolutely a red flag in the gaming world. However, if you start looking at it objectively, one thing does not make something woke, quote unquote. So the next thing that everybody wanted to know is who is in this game we needed to start trashing them so people went out and they found the voice actress who was playing the main character sorry i'm bad with names erica something or other anyway you can tell from the posts that she makes on her twitter and the pronouns in the bio and all that she absolutely would believe all of the stuff that the woke would and would absolutely be a part of a woke game however she hasn't attacked anybody or gone on a tirade, which is, again, very strange for somebody of that belief type. Generally, they come out, they're loud, they're proud, they want to shout you down and call you an instant of hope, but that didn't happen. What she did do, however, is she did run uh, a script or a blockchain type thing. Basically, what it is is you have browser extensions or other apps that you can go into somebody's profile. Maybe somebody said something to her that she couldn't stand because, I don't know, she might have sensitive fee-fees. Maybe she doesn't. I don't know. But she absolutely ran this script, and it blocked an absolute metric crap ton of people. Sorry, trying to be YouTube friendly. An absolute crap ton of people. And a lot of people got caught up in the block. A lot of people that were supporting her, a lot of people that weren't. They were saying, why is she blocking people already? People only had mild criticisms. Well, not necessarily. And especially if you believe the way that she does, any sort of criticism is not mild to that personality type. We've seen it before. So to her, it was probably the most egregious thing that she's ever seen on the internet. But she did run this blockchain. And again, that threw up a red flag for a lot of people. People. Now, the next thing that happened is the ex-CEO of Sony came out and said, if you don't like the game, don't buy it. And a lot of people were like, fine, I won't buy it. Which was what was so funny about that. It was the ex-CEO, the guy who hasn't really had a whole lot of standing in Sony since 2019, which was prior to the release of the first game. Now, everybody seems to think that that matters, that an ex-employee of a company saying that means that that is indicative of what the developer is saying very interesting so here's where all of this ties together for me i played ghost of tsushima i've got a couple hundred hours logged in it love the game actually a buddy of mine bought me a ghost of tsushima mask for my birthday one year uh from etsy because he knew how much i liked the game that's why it's hanging on the wall back there i think it's an absolutely fantastic game probably my favorite game that i've ever played and a lot of people may take exception to that, and that's fine. You're allowed to do that. Here's where I take exception with a lot of people. As of right now, we have no idea what the story of Ghost of Yote is. We have no idea how it's going to continue in the future. We don't know what the marketing strategy is going to be, and Sucker Punch has not said anything publicly. They haven't said she's going to be the most diverse, wonderful women on the planet. She's never. They've never said that. And in fact, the voice actor hasn't even come out and said that. Now... At, they haven't said that as of the recording of this video. 
I could wake up tomorrow, check out Twitter, and it could be all over Twitter that they are in fact saying these things. And guess what? At that point, well, you know what? They have provided us with enough evidence that they are going to follow the trends of the industry and continue to try to put modern day politics into gaming, right? People want, people go to gaming for escapism, right? And when you can't escape with escapism, it tends not to work. What I'm <laughs> so interested in here is that so many people with a massive amount of no evidence, right? A lack of evidence, okay? Are claiming that this game is following all of the traditional pathways of the politically charged woke gaming. Sorry if you heard that, apparently Windows wants to make noise. Uh, screw you Windows, stop making noise while I'm recording a video. But anyway, apparently we are no longer allowed to say, hey, we need to wait for more information. Yes, it's a female character. And in this day and age, that does throw up a red flag. But again, it lends credence to these people who say, oh, they would have called, Laura, if Laura Croft were made today, if the original, the original Tomb Raider was made today, they would call it woke. And you know what? I said that's completely preposterous because most people who use that word knows what it means, right? It has a Marxist background in it, okay? And there's a lot. I've had to explain it to friends of mine. But the fact of the matter is, is if you're explaining, you're losing. And that's just how the world works. So instead of sitting here and saying that, oh, uh, the, the, the new ghost of, of Yote game is, is absolutely politically charged, it's going to follow all of the industry trends of the woke, I'm going to reserve my judgment until I see it in the marketing material or until the developers themselves, you know, the people who are working on the game, come out and say that. All right. Obviously, the game isn't historically accurate. It takes place in a historical time period, and supposedly the island of Tsushima thought it was good enough representation of their culture that they made these guys ambassadors of the island. So, that being said, Sucker Punch is already starting ahead. And I will say this, good reputations are like spider webs. They take a long time to build, but one little bit of rain can destroy them. So hopefully, Sucker Punch doesn't decide to do the one thing that everybody is afraid of and go off and be make politically charged statements. The other side of this, too, is let's talk to the, my side of the aisle for a minute. For everybody out there who's claiming that the game is obviously politically charged, provide evidence, please. Provide evidence from the developers that they are injecting all of this in, into their game. Please, I would, I would very much love to see that. For everybody out there who is saying, the first game had girl bosses all over it. It's like, well... I mean, so did Japanese history. You can actually look it up. They actually had more females fighting in them, as far as I know, from just what I remember researching Japanese history back in the day. Now, did they have as many women as men? No, they didn't. But they had a lot of women out there that picked up swords and fought with swords. Were they as good as the men? No, but there were enough of them that they got written down in the history books. Now, is this game a perfect historical representation of the time? No. Neither was the first one. You'd be stupid to think that. Is this game going to provide escapism without the political messaging? We don't know. We haven't seen enough of it to know that. Okay. Most people are freaking out right now because they're saying, but look at what all of these other developers have done. And I would argue that's a collectivist mindset. All right. I think you should judge the individual, judge the individual companies. And until those individual companies give you a reason to distrust them, why would you distrust them? Simply because others have done something? Man, that's kind of like them saying that all white people are racist. That's a very similar mentality. I mean, some white people for sure. Also, some other people are. But what's so interesting to me is the way that the internet, well, specifically my side of Twitter, people who I thought were objective in their breakdowns of things, people who I thought were objective in what they could do. I've seen people tearing this game down, calling it the biggest trash on the planet, and yet they, they defended Baldur's Gate 3, saying that it was a good game. And they admitted that it had leftist messaging to it. I don't understand why people are jumping on this and yet they have videos on their channels proclaiming the greatness that was Baldur's Gate 3. It makes no sense to me. Just to make a comparison of a recent game that had a lot of political messaging in it. Overall, if we lose our objectivity to look at a game and go, huh, all right, let's wait to see more. I think we lose it completely. Because at that point, we prove that our argument has no standing. Our argument not in fact has no standing. It doesn't have 
even merit to have standing. And that's the one thing, is if we lose our merit and we lose what we are trying to do, if we lose our backbones and just start decrying everything as against me, therefore I don't like it, well, there's an old adage for that. Actually, there's an old story for that. It's the boy who cried wolf. Make sure that you know it's a wolf before you say it's a wolf, guys. I just think it's freaking hilarious. I just, I don't understand. Like I said, I really love the game. And here's the thing. I would absolutely love to buy Ghost of Yote. And I've never played a game with a female main protagonist. Because, not my jam, don't usually like to. But Sucker Punch impressed me so much with Ghost of Tsushima. Not because they did anything new but because they gave me something that I lost myself in for hours. I might actually play my first game that has a female protagonist in it, as long as they leave the political messaging out of it. If they really wanna go down the road of political messaging, well, not popping my cherry on this game for that metric. So for all of that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is an absolutely wild thing. And I think a lot of people out there are losing the plot. And a lot of people out there, you're starting to see that after years and years of being constantly disappointed, people are losing their good faith. They have become demoralized. And to be perfectly honest, we can't become demoralized. You can't take the black pill. If we lose hope in even individuals, then we lose hope for the rest of the future. I don't know. That's my take on it, guys. Let me know what you think about Ghost of Yote. And do you think that Sucker Punch is actually going to be politically charged? Do you? What do you think? Do you think the game is going to be full of messaging? Or do you think the game might not be? What did you think of the first game? A lot of people have strong opinions on it. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you all so much for checking out the channel. And thank you to the 50 new subscribers from this week. You guys are awesome. Fuck yeah, guys. Thank you so much for subscribing. To I didn't even ask you guys to do it. You just did it of your own volition. Thank you all so much. If you want to see more of what I have to say about other topics on the channel, here's some videos right here on the screen. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.